Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a recent added feature to Command Modern Operations 1776. I thought that was kind of a fun name for a version. But um, in order to hint at what this feature is all about, if you haven't read the title already, we're going to demonstrate it and then discuss the implication of it. Let's do it. So I'm taking my B-52 here, I'm going to press Shift F1, I'm going to go ahead and click right here. I've got this lovely little base here. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go ahead and allocate one to each one of these targets. That's going to give me six, but I've got eight, so I'm going to do the rest. And of course, let's have some fun. I'm going to press Execute. <laughs> I think that's kind of a fun new button there. So we're going to be launching a bunch of those uh, lovely uh, conventional air-launched cruise missiles. Meanwhile, I'm going to grab this B-52 with the exact same setup as you're probably observing here. We go ahead and allocate one to each. We're going to go do that. we got to do it twice because we've got eight. I'm going to press the execute button. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unpause. And of course, uh, for those of you who have not seen this party in the real world, it's actually pretty terrifying when these things do their drops. What it will do is it'll actually drop them off the bottom. Now the little uh, warhead, or I should say the motor, will light up, and then they'll start ripping towards its target. And you can see just uh, sort of this thing just diving down to uh, get to low altitude to begin doing its uh, work there. And of course, that's awesome for us. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my B-52 here. i got to actually get the right one. You can go home. You've done your job today. Let me go grab the other B-52 here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, what do I need? The Tomahawk. Yeah, go home, please. Now, let's get the B-52 and send him home. Beautiful. Now, there's something you probably have observed uh, right away against our target here. You'll observe that the cruise missiles that have fired out here in the uh, middle of, um, I guess we're leaving California, getting to like Nevada territory in Utah here, are just cruising around. Uh, they got a bit of a contrail, which makes sense because they're cruise missiles. Now we come over to these, and uh, you probably notice something on the side of them. Uh, you will have observed that we have this thing that says GNSS 62% next to them. What's going on here? Well, these lovely cruise missiles are being jammed. Um, they're actually uh, blocking the GPS signal, which is causing them to lose accuracy of their particular position. You'll notice the uh, G uh, missiles at really high altitude here are really losing the GPS much quicker. And you're noticing the GPS, or I should say the missiles at the low altitude, have great GPS reliability right now. And you're sitting here going, oh, I know why you did this in the mountains. I see what you're doing here. Yeah. So the Earth is curved. We have a vehicle right now that is currently jamming all GNSS satellite signals. Um, basically, that's like saying ATM machine, I know. But the fact of the matter is the Earth is curved. And that means if my jammer is on this side of the curve and my target is on this, or I should say my missiles on the other, they don't talk to each other. That also means that terrain masking has a massive impact on the ability to guarantee that your particular platform does not get jammed. So what is the practical upshot to this? Well, the practical upshot to this is that the longer something does not have GPS or GNSS signal, because obviously Compass and Glasnas and all those guys are affected as well, it is going to be progressively less accurate over time. It'll still be pretty accurate, because again, these things were designed to be jammed. But the reality is that they're going to feel the pain differently. Now, our missiles here were launched over the water intentionally for the purposes of giving them the most exposure to the strongest jamming. Meanwhile, the missiles we launched over the mountain range here are going to have plenty of time to basically not get seen by the jammer and vice versa, if that makes sense. You can't really see anything with the jammer. You know what I mean. Line of sight. There we go. So they're going to have plenty of time to basically hide themselves until they pop out and do the deed kind of a thing. Now, look at the practical consequence to this. I'll speed up time gently this time. So our cruise missiles are arriving right now. These are big cruise missiles, by the way. These are not little like, <laughs> this is like getting struck by, you know, a Cessna 182 kind of a thing with a missile, a big warhead on the front. It is big. All right, they're coming in here. And as you'll notice, their GNSS, a little warning has reappeared on them. And you can also take a look at my calculator instead of pressing the minus key. <laughs> you probably know what that's all about. And you can see um, we've completely lost satellite signal. So in the real world, we wouldn't even be confident where these particular missiles are right now. They're pretty confident because this is a command modern operations. And I'm sure at some point in the future, they're going to make this a lot different as far as communications between units goes. But for today, this works perfectly fine for us. All right, so here they come. Uh, we got a good spread of targets here, and you can see they're all all allocated. And here comes the party. All right, that was nice. That was nice. That was nice. All right, so none of those weapons had GPS signal, basically. And of course, if I pop up here to uh, losses and expenditures, uh, let's see here. Actually, what am I doing? I'll just come down here and show you. You can see the weapon accuracy was degraded to 14.3 uh, meters, which is um, good enough. It's good enough. It's good enough. If I press Control-V real quick, you can see the fact that one of the bunkers was struck more or less directly. So that did work. But what about our buddies who haven't been jammed for the last 15 minutes? Well, their story is going to be a little different. 
And as you can see, uh, they're still cruising through the mountain range here. Uh, they're only going to lose GPS signal in a moment once they start diving out of these uh, valleys here. And you can see the immediate tactical difference that you're going to see as they pop out, basically. So here they come again, no warning, no issues with jamming, no issues with jamming. They're again cruising along, cruising along. I think we're basically not going to get jammed. Ah, there we go. So you can see the GPS is quickly degrading. But wait, they've only lost a few percentage before they show up and start exploding things. Ha 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 ha, look at that, what a hit. All right, let's go ahead and pop this open real quick here. And as you can see, um, the weapon accuracy went down to nine and a half meters. So basically a three meter difference between having GPS um, at all and not having GPS. Now, of course, you're sitting here going, okay, that was pretty good. I like, I like what you did there. You, you showed us very clearly why terrain masking still works. It's because, again, jammers are line of sight. So how do we deal with one of these pesky jamming units? Well, I've got a buddy for that. And da, 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 da. Oh, the F-16CM Block 52. Oh, surprise, surprise. Oh, which one did you think it was going to be? All right, let's go get him. All right. Uh, you, need to, you need to take off now. I need you down south. California needs you. Come to California. Come to the California City Carbonator. That's a joke that nobody's going to understand anymore, but that's okay. All right, let's grab our buddy, uh, Dill number one. Dill number one, if you'd be so kind as to uh, head down south. Achoo! Oh, look at that. Now he's a little more achoo. He's for even further down south. That was awesome. All right, so one of the things these are capable of doing is they're capable of detecting GPS jammers. There it is, the GNSS. I should be more specific. So there it is. And of course, uh, we're going to inconvenience this jammer basically by uh, delivering a much more expensive weapon than the actual jamming unit itself. A fun fact, um, GPS satellites are really, 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 really far away. So if you think, imagine normal satellites are like where my mouse is, a GPS satellite would be over here. So uh, just keep in mind their signals are very weak, so they're very easy to jam. It doesn't matter. There are some constellation systems, again, depending on how they do it. Some are at different altitudes, again, depending if it's compass or LONAS. But the reality is, is their signals are not very strong by the time they get down to the ground. They're not geosynchronous. Uh, geosynchronous would be over here. <laughs> but the reality is they're up pretty high, so they have good coverage, and that gives them a very, very weak signal. All right, let's get a little bit closer. A little F-16 here. This should just say like the G-Jet or something like that on the side of it at this particular point. All right, let's go ahead and waste some money. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up one harm. Now, a harm has no problem tracking this particular signal. That is, unless the other guy shuts off his jammer. One of the interesting things I want to point out as well is this harm missile is uh, going to have a really easy time of this so because the jammer does not affect the harm missile. The <laughs> harm missile just wants to go for the big, strong radar signal, which, of course, since uh, that's provided by our jammer unit here, he's going to get a bit of a surprise when this thing shows up and snaps him in two. Now, the interesting thing here is now that that's taken care of, I can just go up and knock. Just roll in here. Let's see here. What do we have for our weaponry here? We'll go lock on to you. You'll get, you get a JDAM, and you get a JDAM. Let's go ahead and take care of that real fast. And one Mississippi, two, we got both. Nope, we got to wait for the second one to come off the rail there. There he goes. Go home. Nicely done. Now you observe our JDAMs here, which, of course, are GPS weapons. Uh, they're not affected anymore. There's just no problem. Uh, they're just going to fall right down to the ground. Uh, nothing's going to affect their accuracy any longer. And they're going to happily smash into those targets down there. Pop, pop, just like that with no consequence. So as you can see, the uh, GNSS uh, jamming is an interesting problem. It has incredibly long, very, very powerful, very effective range, but it can be countered, uh, but either by doing some terrain masking or hitting with a good old-fashioned weapon of its own to go ahead and destroy it. Enjoy.